Good morning. So this video will be part one of a two-part factoring quadratics video where the a value is not one. This video will show two examples uh, where, the, where there is not a GCF, so a GCF is not present. And then part two will be when there is a GCF present. And so you need to factor out the GCF before you get started with a factoring. And then I will show you the multiple answers. Now, for this factoring video, I will show you um, factoring by grouping. And then also for those of you who like the, um, the box method with the four squares and you want a GCF, um, the columns up, up, and then the horizontal rows. Um, I'll show that. So it'll be quite a long video because I'll show the two methods. I will not show the, uh, I don't even use it, a snowflake. The snowflake method um, because I don't accept that on quizzes, tests, assessments, assignments, no credit. Um, you, you gotta go with those two, okay? Those are only two options. All right, here we go. It's good to see you. I hope you like the rain because there's been a lot of it lately. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, we're factoring where the A value is not one. Uh, remember, we're still gonna go ahead and um, use magic X just to get our numbers together. Uh, so AX squared plus BX plus C, remember we're gonna multiply A times C. Whenever the A value is not one, we have to produce that product. The product is what is on top or the north Remember, this is multiplying, right? And then this is your add, subtract, right? So that's your B value, your bottom. And so of course you have to satisfy these two, right? By coming up with these two numbers such that when they multiply together, so the product gives you this product, so it matches. And then when you add or subtract, depending on the signs, positive or negative, they sum to this value, okay? And then from there, we're gonna move on to um, taking our three terms, producing our four. I realized, I, I wrote this up, and then I realized this might not be that much space. We'll see. Um, but it, definitely when I solve the box theorem, I will use this blank sheet of paper to go ahead and start it there. That way you don't, you're not looking at too much and it becomes overwhelming visually. Okay. Remember, factored form FF, which is, you know, okay. So here's your two factors, right? Your two binomial products. Um, and then when they tell you to factor it, that's your answer. But if they tell you to solve by factoring, you don't stop there. You continue, and we're going to solve the quadratic. You use a zero product property after this factored form, which means you take each binomial factor and you set it equal to zero. So I would take this and set it equal to zero, solve for x. So you'll probably have a one or a two step equation. Same here and you get the second value. Okay. Uh, all right. Example one, solve the quadratic by factoring. So um, here we go. Okay. Your first step, I should have rewrote all of this. Now I feel like stopping this and because now that's going to just make it longer. Okay, as far as your step one, you want to look for a GCF. Is there a GCF? So how would you do that? You look at your coefficients, your constants. You look at the values of A, B, C. Remember, A, B, C. A is 3, B is positive 19, C is negative 14. Okay, 19 is a prime, 3 is a prime, 14 is not a prime, it's 2 and 7. But 3 does not divide into 19, 3 does not divide into 4. Um, into 14 or negative 14. So there is no GCF. So we're going to continue on to step two, and that's where you're going to go ahead and you're going to build your A times C B value, and you're going to try and come up with the two values that give my give me this product, but this summation, right? And hopefully, I don't have it written out yet, but I will. Um, you do know that A, B, C, correct? Okay, so A times C. So you're going to multiply this together. Ah, I'm throwing my calculator. All right, you can always verify. There's no shame in that. So 3 times 14 gives me 42. 
but negative 42, right? Because positive times a negative is a negative, right? Okay, so now take my magic X, just kind of build it off of that. My V value is 19, and that is positive 19. So now we need to come up with all possibility pairs of 42, okay? All right, so here they are. One and 42, right, remember this. So 42 divided by one, 42, 42 divided by two, two and 21. 42 divided by three, 14. And even though you see the pair already, we're just gonna keep going. Divided by four, that's right, it's trash, not, not a pair. Just don't even look at it. 42 divided by five, it's a fraction, not a pair. 42 divided by six. And so those are our possible pairs. So our possible pairs of, of getting this product, 42, is one times 42, two times 21, three times 14, and six times seven. Okay, so now before you, before you choose your pair, you need to pay attention to this sign. 42 is negative. The only way you get a negative product is if one number is positive and one number was negative, right? A positive times a negative gives me a negative, right? Okay, so with that being said, now you realize the summation here is actually a subtraction. It's a difference. So I subtracted two numbers and I got this positive 19, right? Because if your two signs are not the same, you're subtracting. Okay, now because this 19 is positive, that means your leftover or your difference, the bigger number is positive. So I know this will be the bigger number and this will be the smaller number, right? Okay, so now we're gonna subtract. So what's 42 minus one? That's 41, nope, let's skip that one. What's 14 take away three? 11, nope. What's seven take away six? One, nope. All right, so this is gonna end up being our pair, and that is because what is 21 minus two? It is 19 but the bigger number is gonna be the 21, the positive, and the smaller number two will be the negative. And so there we have it. And so you can grab a calculator if you want, and you can say 21 times negative two is negative 42, good enough. And now 21 subtract two, positive 19. So I'm good, okay. All right, so here we go. So for this step two, you multiplied your A times C, you built your B value, and then you had to come up with these two values, right? You had to find these two values that satisfied. Okay, that is your magic X. Okay, now your third step, you're gonna make your three terms become four, right? And the way you do that is that BX term. That's what you're focused on. Okay, so these two circular terms are going to go in for your BX term. So your original quadratic is a trinomial, AX squared plus BX plus C. That's one, two, three terms. I'm going to make my three terms become four terms. Because instead of this BX, which is 19X, I'm going to replace it with these two. So when I rewrite that, I'm going to get 3X squared. But in place of this 19X, I'm going to write plus 21X minus 2X minus 14. You can keep the... Um, that's equals zero, you can keep it off a little bit to the side. Some students, I see that it um, confuses them sometimes, so if you kind of kind of put it off. Some kids leave it out, but the problem is, is when you get to the end, the directions are to solve, and then some students will stop at the factoring and they forget. So you do want to carry it down, but it, it's pretty much just kind of quietly just being carried down for now. Okay, so that's what third term is. We're taking three terms, we're turning it into a form term polynomial right? And they're equivalent, right? They're equivalent. 
because 19x, well, what's 21x minus 2x? 19x. So they are equivalent. Okay, so then the fourth step, you're now going to split, right? So you're going to have two terms, two terms, and then you're going to GCF. Okay, so what do I mean by that? You're going to take and you're going to split it, right? So two terms, two terms. So that's what the two, two is. You're gonna split the four terms. So two, two, and then you're gonna GCF. Okay, what does that mean? I'm a GCF the left, I'm a GCF the right. So you're gonna GCF those two binomials. Okay, so now GCF, what is that? What do these two terms have in common? The greatest in common. Okay, so let's first look at the three and the 21, the coefficients. Okay. What is divisible by 3 and divisible by 21? 3, right? 3 divided by 3 is 1. 21 divided by 3 is 7. So I can factor out a 3. Okay, what about your x's? I have two x's present, and I have one x, right? Because 21x is really x to the 1. So how many are shared? Only one. And so I can only pull out one X. Remember, you can't take two out because this only has one to give. It can't be in debt. We don't want any negative exponents. Okay, so that's our GCF. So now in the parentheses, you are going to write what is left. So basically what the product. Okay, so what's three divided by three? That's one, and it's up to you whether or not you wanna write the one. Okay, there's two, you took one away, so what's two subtraction one? One, and again, it's up to you if you wanna write that one there or you could just write X. Now divide, what's 21 divided by three? Seven, and then one X, take away one X, there's no X's there, right? And I'll, I'll rewrite it and I'll write it, I'll write it cleaned up. Okay, and now check your work. How do you check your work? You distribute. 3x times 1x is 3x squared. 3x times 7 is 21x. So I'm good. Okay, now you're going to come now to the second two terms. And you're going to GCF the minus 2x minus 14. Okay, but it is not coincidental that we know we GCF this correctly these two are always, always, always going to match. If they do not match, you did something wrong. These two will always be the same. So if you're ever, oops, if you're ever factoring and they're different, go back and find out why. Maybe you left off a sign or <clears throat> you went for the common factor, not the greatest. Okay, so I get... I'm going to get x plus 7 here, right? Okay, but now let's walk through it. Okay, see how this term is negative? If this front term is ever negative, you always want to pull it out. All right, so now what's divisible by 2 and 14? What's the largest or the greatest common factor? It's 2. And now this has one X, this has no X's. So you can't take any X's out. You can't factor any X's out. There's none to give here, zero wins. And so we don't pull an X out. And I'll check what's negative two times X, negative two X. What's negative two times positive seven, negative 14. Now, these are equivalent. This, I was just a little bit more technical and precise by writing in the, the implied or the assumed ones, but this is equivalent. Okay, so now for the fifth step, once you get your GCF going, right? So whatever this is, remember these two are always the same, always. You're then going to GCF again, and essentially what happens, because we already did this lecture, essentially what happens 
is that what matches as a same becomes one because they're both present and these two become the secondary and those are your two binomial factors okay you don't get that because i know i got it all squishy so i'm trying to make it work okay if you now you gcf again because that's really what they're asking you to do you're now gcfing but now they're factors okay so when you look at these two what do they share? X plus seven, X plus seven. So you're gonna remove that X plus seven, right? Because there's one of them. And now what is left? What is left is your GCF. I'm trying to see which side of the marker I pull out. Are these, and these create your first, typically they go in the front, but you wouldn't get docked if you put it in the back. 3x minus 2. And then this one goes here. I'll color code it just because you're used to it. And so that's where they're coming from. So you GCF again, but most students kind of skip that. And what they start realizing is the visual is, the visual is oh, whatever I GCF, that creates one binomial factor. Oh, and the re repetitive or the repeating binomial factor becomes one. And so that is equal zero. Now, this is in factored form. Yeah, no kidding, like that is so in my way. Um, I still need to keep going. Oh great, I'm dropping. Okay, so let's, let's go over it, let's do this. Okay, so remember, we are wanting to solve. So right now, all we did was factor. If I want you to solve, you are not done here. This is not done. You need to keep going, which means use zero product property. So if I have 3x minus 2, x plus 7 equals 0, zero product property means that I am allowed to set my binomial factors equal to 0 separately. So I essentially create a one-step equation and a two-step equation. So, oops, my hand's totally in the way. 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. x plus 7 is equal to 0. And now you just solve. So take that 2 over. 3x right, which is just plus 2 plus 2. Divided by 3. And x is 2 thirds. And then here... I get x minus 7. And so that is your solve. This is your answer. Because essentially, when they're asking you to solve a quadratic, they are asking you for the intercepts, the zeros, um, the x-intercepts, the zeros, the roots, the solutions. That's what they're asking you for. It's where, now that we're starting to graph, um, it is where the quadratic crosses the x-axis. So that means you're going to have a point here at negative 7, 0 and 2 thirds, 0. Okay. Um, okay, this is 18 minutes. Maybe I should do this another video. Okay, I'll do another video for the second one because this is going really long. Okay. All right, I will start another video.